Hey everyone, we're here with Eve Fauser and Dan Wenden and we're going to be talking about the OpenStack integration with NSX. Um, NSX and OpenStack, can you explain a little bit more about what it is, what the background is, and basically show us a little bit about it? Sure, Jeremy. So let's first of all speak a little bit about OpenStack uh, in general and about the uh, projects, the integrated projects in OpenStack. So. We have a number of projects in OpenStack. The most centerpiece, I would say, is Nova, codename Nova, which is the compute piece. This is also where we interface to uh, vSphere. So Nova is interfacing with all kinds of uh, hypervisors, being open source hypervisors like KVM and Xen, but also to commercial implementations like uh, VMware vSphere. Um, then we have another, uh, an, a number of other services like Glance holding disk images that it services to Nova so that Nova can place it on a hypervisor to boot them up. Uh, we have an identity piece, which is Keystone. Uh, Keystone is doing authentication for users, but is also providing tokens that, can, or that are used to authenticate between the uh, projects. Then we have an object storage called Swift. It may or may not be used in the whole environment. It can also be used uh, standalone as an object storage to offer file services to cloud users. Um, then we have Cinder, which is uh, doing block uh, storage. So it's mapping iSCSI volumes to instances, to VMs. VMs are called instances in OpenStack um, on, on Nova. Um, here's also a place where we interface, but then we'll go into more details on that. And uh, this is uh, the project that is core to my heart. It's the networking piece uh, called Neutron, and that provides uh, networking services, so networks that are consumed by VMs or instances that we start uh, by Nova. And then we also have a dashboard, a reference implementation called Horizon. Uh, quite often in demos you will see it, but very often in customer uh, implementations, it is then um, it, a customer uses its own portal or could use also a, a, um, a commercial implementation like our uh, vCloud Automation Center, which is also able to interface uh, with OpenStack. Perfect. Okay. So it really looks like you can have a choice between each and every backend that you want behind it. So full choice for the customer, which is always good. Exactly. It's, it's a framework to build the cloud, basically. Um, you can build that cloud with purely open source, with open source component, also or interface to commercial products. Perfect. Thank you very much. So Dan, I think you're going to talk a little bit about more about the OpenStack and vSphere support, which is... Yeah. Said that's an example of that choice. So in OpenStack, each service, like Nova, Cinder, Neutron, they basically have a generic set of API codes. The API calls you make would be the same regardless of the backend you choose. And then you, you, each of those services has what's called a driver. And the driver is what takes that API call and really translates it to some backend system that really kind of does the heavy lifting. And so the overall properties of the cloud you get obviously depends a lot on which backends you select. And everything from the scalability to the performance to the manageability and troubleshooting, that all depends on the back end you select. So in this example, in this slide, we have an example of OpenStack running with vSphere as the compute and storage portion of the cloud and NSX as the networking uh, back end. And so as you can see, the Nova driver for Nova compute basically with, with vSphere is something that takes a Nova API call like boot a VM with this much CPU, this much RAM, Etc., and takes that and translates that to an API call against vSphere itself. And you'll actually see this in the demo. You can be watching vCenter, and you'll see those calls come through in the VM being created automatically. Similarly, Cinder, which is block storage, so these are, these are additional disks that provide persistent storage that you can connect to your VMs. That is also implemented using VMDKs that you can attach and detach from VMs using vSphere API calls as well. On the Neutron side, it's a little different in that it's not making API calls to vSphere, it's making API calls to NSX, but same idea. You have a create a Neutron network call, which then gets tr translated to a call against NSX to create the network. And so, you know, what, what we'll see, um, and I think we'll, we'll see in the demo, is that you, know, you get a lot of the, the benefits of having vCenter there as your background. For example, you can, even when you're using OpenStack, you get things like HA, DRS, et cetera. Et cetera. 
Yeah, perfect. So, I mean, this all is very clear to me, all the components that you need to build up, uh, build up a cloud and have the choice. Um, I think we're going to show some of these um, these things, like, for example, Horizon, which is the dashboard I think exactly. we're looking at now. That's the, that's the Horizon dashboard, and you can see that we have like our quota here, where we see how many instances we still left, how many vCPUs, etc. So uh, we'll dive into it and go to the networking tab. And here in the networking tab, we can create our networks. So uh, we'll create a network and uh, call this Barcelona oops, demo. I wanted to take an uppercase here. Uh, we'll create a subnet to it and give it a network range. Oh, let's take the one that everybody chooses, right? Exactly. Okay, so I'll not shoot that off yet because I want to show something else first. So that's um, the NSX Manager. NSX Manager is kind of like a GUI implementation um, for the controller API. So it's it's a management system that translates like things that I can understand in the GUI to API calls to the controller, to the NSX controller cluster. And here we see our switches, switch ports, and it's actually our own, um, own cloud running inside of VMware. It's already pretty big with 100 hypervisors here. I can see some big numbers here. One of the things that we see with traditional networks is this VLAN limitation. Yeah. That's completely sort of gone here, right? Exactly. That is that is gone because we all do with uh, with overlay networking, and uh, we have an own ID space in here. We can have up to 16 million, uh, 16 million networks. We are doing a workshop wow, that's extreme flexibility and extreme uh, sort of stretchability of the network as well. Like exactly. So let's now search hands, for our uh, Barcelona demo no switch. So if you want to get some intimate knowledge on vSphere 101. And lab, that will, of uh, course, not be there the we because we didn't create it right yet. So we just want to check that it's really not there. So you can see we don't have that switch yet. So we'll create it on Horizon. And that is where the API call is done uh, through the neutron piece to the NSX controller. Now let's go to NSX Manager again. And you can see, hopefully, yes, we have our Barcelona demo switch here. So that's the logical switch. And we will see we already have a logical switch port on that switch um, because we have a DHCP server running uh, in OpenStack that provides IP addresses to instances that we boot. And of course, it needs to have a port in our switch. And that's what we see here. OK. So now, next, we'll go to instances. And we'll actually boot off a VM on the vSphere cluster. OK, so all this within the Horizon overview and all the communication in the back end just happens automatically because of all those components that we implemented here. Exactly. So it's it's a lot of API go calls going back and forth, but also message. We're also using a message bus to send uh, requests inside the project. So it's, it's a lot of magic going on here. So we'll select a Windows 7 image. Um, it has a special tag that it should run on vCenter, on, on vSphere. Uh, and we'll just give in a funny name called Windows 7 1. Oops, Windows 2 would be the wrong one. And uh, here we have the flavors. That's where we select how big this machine should be. So let's give it two vCPUs, four gigs of RAM. Here in access and security, um, I can uh, put in uh, ACLs. I could allow access with SSH and stuff like that. So I just put my allow all list because I don't really want to demo it now. And, and just to be sure, this security is done within the NSX piece, right? The exactly. security is not in the VM itself, but it's in the virtual networking layer. Exactly. So it's all done also in NSX. Uh, you don't have to configure additional firewalls or any like firewall apps or anything. It's all included in NSX in the vSwitch. OK, so now let's move up this Barcelona demo here. And we see we'll, we'll now give a network interface card in the Barcelona demo network to this instance. It will now take some time because it now schedules uh, the VM to run on a hypervisor. Um, in this case, it, it, it schedules it to run on, on vSphere, and vSphere will do the rest and find the, a free hypervisor where to place it. So that's usually the place where it takes some time to, uh, to show up.
Yeah, obviously, because probably you do stuff like intelligent placement within vSphere as well, exactly. and, and all the integration is there. Yeah, and we need to create the networks, we need to take the image from Glance uh, to uh, put it, to uh, schedule to run it on the hypervisor, so that, that obviously takes some time. Yeah, but that's that's normal. That always happens. I think that the process just launched, and and we can probably see that on on the NSX manager being coupled. Um, so, how flexible is this? Can you do everything with this? If you want to have a, a different layout or or anything, how flexible is the Horizon uh, sort of dashboard? Well, the Horizon interface is somewhat flexible. You can change logos. If you see here, we have our nice zero by VMware logo placed in here, um, but it's not like perfectly. F um, um, suitable to every need so that's why a lot of people build their own uh, their own uh, dashboard yeah so, so they could use for example vCloud automation center as well to talk to OpenStack again and to basically do everything around there it's basically freedom of choice for the customer again yeah exactly a vCloud automation center would even sit on top of OpenStack and maybe other car kinds of clouds right you can schedule something on Amazon web service it can schedule something on an OpenStack cloud and it can schedule something on a regular vCenter if you want so so v vCAC is really on top of it right nice so uh, now the instance booted and now we see that we have an additional switch port uh, that popped up here so uh, we didn't look at vCenter yet. Uh, we only looked at the networking piece. So that's that's the IP address that it got, the, the VM. Now let's boot a second instance. And then we will really look at vCenter. So call it vin7, oh, two, of course. We'll do the same here with security groups and networking and then we can just wait for it to schedule and we'll look here and here you will see that the uh, instance pops up yeah so I mean this will obviously take a little bit of time uh, Dan maybe can you explain us a little bit more about the value of OpenStack in combination with NSX for our customers and partners and everyone out there Sure, yeah, so I mean, the reason someone would be interested in OpenStack on vSphere and NSX are a lot of the same reasons they've known and loved vSphere and NSX even outside of OpenStack. It's kind of that core value prop. For example, with vSphere being able to take advantage of things like DRS, HA, reliable vMotions, it's about having an interface to manage your cloud and troubleshoot with tools you're really familiar with already, and maybe third-party tools that are integrated with, with, uh, with uh, vCenter already. Uh, so they, you know that on the core compute that the fact that you have applications that have been validated to be compatible, et cetera, are really big wins. On the storage side, you know you're able to take advantage of all of our ecosystem of, of, of storage partners, as well as the new technologies like vSAN that that can plug in. So again, you've got a lot of choice within within the already strong VMware storage ecosystem. And then on the NSX side, it's a lot of the things you touched on already that you demonstrated. You know overlay networks for scalability beyond VLANs, advanced services like firewalling, which, which you already showed, and things like load balancing, which we don't even have time to demo, yeah, but just lots of really cool advanced network services. Yeah, exactly. Well, in the end of our, our demo here, we're also going to talk about some more places for information, such as your session on Thursday. Mm -hmm. um, so I definitely recommend viewers to do that. If you're interested, look at the end of the slide as well, or at the end of the session, uh, and you'll find some, some tips there. Um, Eve, are we ready to yeah, show how this it, continues? It, it came up. Uh, you can see here that it powered on. It reconfigured it. And we can now have a look at uh, the instance that was, or the VM that was uh, placed on, on vSphere. And uh, here we can also see what, what Jan, Dan just alluded to, um, that it is actually uh, running on, um, on a, uh, that is running on HA. And, uh, and so we could possibly like lose a, uh, a vSphere host and uh, it will be spun up on, on another host. Exactly, right? so even though you're using OpenStack, still all the features that you have in the vSphere underlying layer, you can still use that, which exactly. is obviously what everyone wants. So now we can uh, also create a router here in this network because now obviously those two VMs can, can talk to each other, but they cannot go outside of, of OpenStack and of, of their cloud. So uh, here we can just create a router, call it Barcelona router. And we will uplink that router to, uh, to, the, uh, to the outside world, to the internet basically.
and then we'll give it an interface to our network that we created. So this is just like a physical router. We give it two yeah. interfaces, one to the outside world, one to the newly Barcelona demo network. And basically that makes our VMs capable of talking to the outside world. Exactly. So now it got its internal interface too. And I mean, one of the things that people sometimes ask me is, okay, so how do we get this logical network to talk to the physical world? Well, in the end, obviously, this is connecting it to the internet, so we exactly. enter the physical space at some point. So, and now if we, if we look for it um, in the dashboard, uh, we can click on the routers tab, and we will see that we will find a router called Barcelona Demo here. So actually, we have 704 routers here. Normally, in the physical world, that would be a huge investment oh, and a yeah. huge closet of, of hardware. Um, this is all virtual, right, those 704? Absolutely. They are all spun up on a uh, scale-out cluster of gateway nodes. So um, it's, it's really scalable, easy to, uh, to, uh, to scale uh, big. So here's our router. OK. So uh, well, finally, what we can do now is connect to the instance and just do a couple of pings and see if it can go out to the internet. Um, nothing fancy here. Hopefully the Basically. demo gods uh, we're, we're, uh, are happy and uh, we can connect to our console. Well, we all know Murphy's Law, but still we want some proof of, uh, of this actually working. So it would be great to, uh, to see some pings going around. Okay, so um, now we have our Windows 7 that we connect to. So let's open up a command prompt. And, uh, and we'll just uh, ping out to the internet to a uh, server out there, the world-famous 8888. And here we have our reply. So thanks, guys, very much for, uh, for showing us this information about OpenStack and NSX. It's very useful for everyone at home, I'm sure. And if you want to find out more about NSX and OpenStack, be sure to look at these links. So uh, we've got, obviously, a VMworld session hosted by Dan himself. If you want more information and you're here, visit that session on Thursday. Otherwise, go and look at the recorded session after VMworld uh, on the VMworld.com website. We've also got a VMware OpenStack virtual appliance that you can download at this link, so be sure to to have a look at that. And lastly, but certainly not least, try out the hands-on labs. If you're here, you can actually do them right now, but they're open to viewers at home as well. So go to hol.vmware.com, log in, and access the 1303 lab or any of the other NSX labs.